Hi everyone. So, so many of you have asked me to do this video that we're going to, we're going to do this. It's probably going to be a series because I don't want to try to fit everything in one video and also I'm just not necessarily in that place today so I'm not going to be able to talk for an hour in a video is basically what I'm saying to you. And we're going to talk about a lot of things with this. So a lot of you have asked me to do like a more how to work with tarot vampires in depth. So I first got tarot vampires back in, I want to say like 2009 or 2010. Let me see when. Wait, let me see when it was. I'm getting so old now that I don't remember dates very well. Okay, so it came out in 2010. So I got it in 2010, maybe 2011. And it was one of my first tarot decks and I just loved it right away. This is my original book, which I am heartbroken the other day, a whole section of it fell out, but that's okay because I have an extra. And just in case, my partner has an extra. And just in case I have another extra so that I will never not have this deck. Also, did I mention I'm a Taurus? Um, so, uh, got, like I said, got this in 2010 or 2011, maybe 2011, but anyhow, this is like my tarot deck. I knew I just connected with it so well and loved working with it personally, but also for my clients as I started to venture out into doing readings for others with this deck. I had amazing experiences and just adored working with this deck. So I have, this deck has gone everywhere with me. It's grown with me over the years. I've turned countless people on YouTube onto it and countless clients onto this deck as well. This is my original Tarot Vampires deck. Like I said, I have many. Um, as you can see, I trimmed the borders off of mine and put red, uh, I used red Sharpie to, to um, do the sides of the cards, whatever you call that. There's a technical term. Um, and I need to redo it. As you can see, it's starting to wear thin from use. So this is my original deck. I take care of my decks. So this is the original and it's actually still in really good shape, as you can see. I mean, there are some, obviously, some scratches. There's beeswax um, on some of the cards, but on the whole, it's a deck that's in great shape. It's very well loved and it just feels right in my hands. So if you're new to tarot and you haven't had that experience yet, when you find your deck, it's just right for you. It's like, it just feels just right in your hands, like so good. And this deck does that. And this deck trimmed is like the perfect size. I love to just hold them shuffle them, they go everywhere with me. Um, they're actually traveling right now with my other Oracle deck that I always get the name wrong of, which I'll put the link below. Why can't I remember this? It's not Other Voices, it's Oracle of Echoes or something like that, but I always wanna call it Other Voices. I love this deck, I love this deck. This deck and this deck for the last mm, almost year probably have been deeply in love and have not left each other's side. And so they travel in my little bag, they go everywhere I go. I'm always prepared, as a good reader always says. Even though, technically, we don't really need the cards, but that's another video. So, um, if you are, let's say you've just purchased this deck, some things I want to tell you about. Well, I need a sip of water. I just did another video, so lots of talking today. Um, I would really recommend that you not purchase the deck without the book. You want the book. I promise you that you want the book. Even if you don't want the deck, you want the book. So even if you say to me, Racine, I don't like dark artwork, the deck scares me half to death, I'm still going to say to you, I know, sweetie, but please get the book. There's no pictures in there. You can pretend that you don't see the scary things. Okay, I promise you're still going to want this. If you're new to tarot, this is going to give you a completely new way of working with tarot. Uh, slightly different than Rider Waite Smith, but still close enough to it that it's comfortable. So, 
Um, what you want to know about this deck, it combines Rider Waite Smith, it combines Thoth, and it combines Order of the Golden Dawn and the Boda systems. So um, if you like the Hermetic Tarot, you will see, I'm going to be all over the place in this, which is why I'm doing an intro video. So you'll see Kindred Spirits, the Magus of the Eternal under the Hierophant. Do you see that? Um, that is from the Hermetic Tarot. So you can see that you can reference and cross-reference many other decks and many other deck systems with this tarot deck. So that opens up a lot of opportunities. It means that you're going to kind of get a feel for a couple other systems while still working close enough to Rider Waite Smith that you feel comfortable. Um, however, it also means that it's not true Rider Waite Smith because some of the meanings are going to vary. And so if you're absolutely smack dab new to tarot, and this deck didn't pull you in as soon as you saw it and you weren't like racing, I, I can't not work with this deck, which is my experience. I would recommend that you start with Rider Waite Smith or at least get a Rider Waite Smith to accompany each card so that you can have a good basis in tarot as you are starting to understand the tarot vampire system. So that's what I would recommend. Um, if you know, as you're, if you're, just, if you're a new, new, new baby tarot reader, whether that's for yourself, for other people, wherever you are on that journey. Um, congratulations, welcome, and I would really recommend having a Rider Waite Smith deck with this so that you can understand the duality of some of the meanings and so that you also have an understanding when you go to other books that are Rider Waite Smith based and other decks which are Rider Waite Smith based. You're not kind of handicapped from traditional meanings. That being said, I'm someone who combines reading intuitively and traditionally. So I also don't feel you always need the guidebook meanings or that you need to have them memorized. They're much more of a um, jumping off point for your reading abilities. So you're going to want both the deck and the guidebook, I hope. If not, if you're only going to do one or the other, please get the guidebook. It's going to be totally worth it for you. Um, you can see that it's a serious guidebook. Uh, here's like the much nicer, newer one that's not, hasn't moved 15 times with me. It's 301 pages and like it's all the way to the end of the 301 is like really yummy good stuff. So the, the, the beautiful thing about the guidebook meanings is that you get uh, alchemy and kindred spirits, which are like, so that you can understand um, where astrologically the card is located, what it's associated with, and also the kindred spirit aspect helps you to understand um, the, like the hermetic system, the Boda system, the order of the golden dawn, the Thoth, and also you'll see references to certain guardian angels and things like that. So if that kind of floats your boat, it's awesome to have that reference point. It's right there at the beginning. It's super handy. You don't have to search around for it. Then you get the essence of the card, which are keywords, right? So I'm at uh, Ten of Scepters right now. Essence, the manifestation of will, pressure or resistance, perseverance, self-determination, and it goes on and on, right? So you get keywords. Then you get the message, which is at least a few paragraphs long. Then you get analysis and symbolism, which is at least a lot more paragraphs long. Then you get the shadow aspect, which is at least a paragraph. If it's major, you're going to get at least two paragraphs. So you're getting a lot of information, a lot of bang for your buck. You probably spent $29.95 on this deck unless you bought it on Amazon, at which point you got it for a lot cheaper, although you weren't able to support shopping local. It's a give and take there with that. I understand that. Um, shopping local, shopping small, which I do try to do, and I know you guys do as well. Um, but you're getting a lot for your investment out of this. I promise you. For the guidebook alone, it's totally worth it. Um, here's some things to think about. If the artwork actually scares you and is going to hinder your reading, maybe you shouldn't read with it. Now, I like things that provoke us and push us and make us uncomfortable. I think that they're really juicy ways to get into knowing ourselves better and understanding our own truths and our paths. But if it's actually making it difficult for you to read, please don't force yourself. It's not the deck for you. The, and I, and I, I don't mean that in a condescending way. I just mean Tarot Vampires is not the deck for everybody. You have to at least be um, pulled into the artwork and like uh, mythology along the lines of 
vampires, um, Hades, Persephone, and you have to, uh, Hecate, the Morrigan, you have to kind of like these darker themes, not just, not only darker themes, but you have to at least find your suite within the darker themes in order to get the most out of this deck. So I do want to say that like just right from the start. Um, even though I recommend this deck to everybody, I always say it's not for everybody. And if it doesn't call to you, it might not be the deck that you want to work with. It will, you'll know it's calling to you if you can't stop thinking about it, if you have really great readings with it, even if you don't like the artwork, if you love the artwork and feel like you just came home. Um, so you get a little bit of all of that. And Ian Daniels' images are dense. They are not, uh, there's nothing light and airy going on. Every single thing that he's put in the cards, every single thing, down to the number of the roses on the bush and the amount of stars in the picture, every single thing has a meaning and he will discuss it in the guidebook under analysis and symbolism so that you can have an understanding of why he made certain choices. But it is, it is important to know that the images are kind of tightly packed. It's not a line strider tarot. It's not Rider Waite Smith. You've got a lot going on in these images. So it, they, it is a deck that lends itself very well to meditation and, journal, and journeying and journaling, actually. But if you find that things that are overly populated, images that are overly populated with symbolism are difficult for you, again, it might not be the deck for you, just so that you know. Let's see. Have I said, have I given you your list of this might not be the deck for you if? I think we did good with that, right? Okay. Um, so, the it, absolutely essential with this deck is building a relationship with it. Um, this is not a deck, in my experience, and you can absolutely trust your own intuition with this, but, like, I don't... I work with this deck every day, actually. I work with this deck every day. I draw cards from it every morning. So for me, it's an everyday, constant kind of talking to, connection with the deck, building of the relationship. Because of that, I'm super lucky. Uh, the deck talks to me all the time. Um, I, I don't find, it, you know, in previous years, maybe around like 2014 when I first had my son, Ted Vincent in 2013 actually. Um, but like 2014, I was like at that exhausted point of early motherhood. <laughs> and so I didn't pull this deck out as often as I had before that and it, from 2015 forward. And I would say that for that year, I you know I really felt a difference not having that deep connection with the deck. So I'm a reader who likes to spend time with my decks. And I think Tara Vampires loves it when you spend time with it. You know, it doesn't mind if you cheat on it occasionally, but it likes you to be relatively faithful. So it's a deck that really um, wants to have a relationship with you, and it's, it's, it's an awesome thing. So let's talk about basic ways to work with your deck. I talk about this stuff all the time. I'm just going to run it down in this video in case you're new to tarot. Uh, I don't want you to feel like, well, I don't know what she's talking about right now. So ways that you can connect with the deck. First of all, before you start working with it, I would really recommend that you clear, cleanse, consecrate, however you want to say that for your deck. Basically, clear the deck in a way that feels right for you. So, and I have a uh, intro to tarot series, which I know is super old and super unprofessional, but like, it's me, it's real, and you can see in that video kind of how I tend to clear my decks, but, <clears throat> Especially when I first start working with them, uh, I like to go through each, run it over the elements that I have represented, and whether that's on my altar or you know in whatever I'm doing, I'm not one of those people that has to do things the same every way. I like my ritual and my path to support my truth, my life. So sometimes these things happen on the road, and you got to just roll with you with what you have. But I, at the very least, like to run it over sage and beeswax candle just like you know run the cards like here's my candle just like run the cards over that clear them set an intention for our relationship together and then do a lot of shuffling do a lot of shuffling so if you're looking at everything as energy you, as you're shuffling your cards you're setting an intention that this is your deck whether you're going to let other people touch your deck or not it's still good to build that energetic and physical touch relationship with the deck as well. 
So that's very important. It's an important way of building a relationship and I regularly clear and cleanse my deck. If you are a card reader, please, if you are reading for yourself, especially if you're reading for other people, please clear your deck on the regular. Please, just please. You know, you can use Sage, you can use Palo Santo, you don't have to use a smoke. Um, but do something that lets your deck be cleared of your energy from when you were in the middle of that breakup and you did a reading. You don't want that energy coming forward five days till you're in a, you know, when you're in a different space and starting to move forward and wanting some, a more positive message, perhaps. You don't want the energy to get muddied, to get dirty, to get mucky. And if other people are touching your deck, you don't want to do a reading that has their energy in your reading. So very important to be responsible with the clearing, the cleansing, and the um, consecrating of your deck. Again, also touching the deck, working with it a lot, shuffling with it a lot, doing those kind of things, especially at the beginning, help you know you feel more comfortable with holding the deck. Like, what's it going to feel like to hold the deck? What's it going to feel like to shuffle with the deck? Uh, what's it going to feel like to lay the cards out? That kind of thing. <coughs> If you are new to tarot, I would really encourage that you start with a daily card draw. I still do them every day, and I've been reading tarot now for almost 10 years. So it's important to, um, to have that kind of daily connection, especially if you are, if you find tarot to be um, an important practice in your spiritual journey, um, and especially if you're a reader, like connecting with the cards, I think is really powerful and important. So, you know, making sure I make sure that I, I craft, I carve, I craft time every day to at least do a daily draw and spend time with the card. Now I do my draws from tarot vampires every day. And I actually like to read the guidebook every day, even though at this point I don't always need to. Um, there's something magical about this guidebook, and I always find something new in it every time I read a card meaning, even if it's one that I've read 100, 500, 800 times before. So if you are looking for ways to connect with your deck, a daily draw, I would really recommend. And let that daily draw not just be like, pull the card, run out the door, but instead sit and think. So maybe if you're doing it with a partner, have a conversation. Um, if you are choosing this, you know, for this to be a solitary experience, or maybe you're kind of sharing that, some of it's shared, some of it's solitary, take the time to journal and have a journal set aside for perhaps your spiritual path where you write all those things out and, um, you know, are able to look back at that and see what the meanings have been for you, but also throughout the days, what have the lessons been as you've been pulling certain things and you start to get a feel for oh, okay, when I draw this card, um, I'm often looking at and exploring this part of myself. It gives you a really beautiful tool, um, something to look back on and draw upon, especially if you're a reader and you want to read for other people or you are reading for other people. But also, personally, on your journey, you can see where you were at certain times and what cards were coming up and what those meant to you. So I really recommend journaling. Daily draw, journaling. Then spreads. So spreads you can do as often or as infrequently as you want to. That's a personal thing. Um, I would say, especially with Tarot Vampires, don't get overly trigger happy with your card spreads. Like you don't need a 50 card spread. I, 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 I love and support everyone's journeys with, with Tarot, but I, I often am like 30 cards in a spread. Like that's way too convoluted for me anyhow as a reader. I, I like to keep things simple because I don't really use spreads. I draw, you know, I, I, I pull and I usually do some type of a circle type of thing. It's something and there's usually an odd number of cards because that's how I am. I don't typically go to even for numbers. And then I look at the story that the cards are telling me before I even think about the meanings. And then I'm always tapped into my intuition. What's that saying to me for my clients? So. But spreads can be a wonderful way of developing a relationship with your deck as well because you're seeing how certain cards are interacting with each other. So daily draws, journaling, spreads when that feels right. Um, the other thing is to carry your deck around with you. Some of us love to do that, some of us don't. I find it to be really awesome. It's always in my bag, I know where it is. Um, if someone has a question, I can pull the deck out, talk to them a little bit. If someone has a question about me as a reader, it's something we can talk about. Um, 
it's a nice way to create a connection with other people as well but also it's just nice to have I might have something come up during the day and I just want to shuffle my deck because it makes me feel better a self-soothing thing or um, I might need to ask a question and just feel like you know what I want to look at the cards for some clarity about like why this situation is coming up for me so carrying the deck with you can be very helpful especially with this deck uh, study I would recommend it if you're someone who likes to study and take notes and highlight things and have journals for each thing that you're doing like me if you're like that and you love that kind of thing you kind of get off on it um, tarot of vampires is a deck that wants to be your best friend for this um, you can do journal work and journal work and journal work and journal work off of this um, all kinds of study you can arrange you know journals set up so that you can get not only the guidebook meaning but like what you felt from it there's so many videos out there on journaling in this way that I'm not gonna make a separate video for that but plus I think I did one a couple years ago but um, Phantasmagoria of the guidebook and the Tarot of Vampires really really support study and um, occult wisdom on like understanding occult knowledge and applying that as wisdom in your day-to-day -day life uh, if you're wondering about that, look at the Temperance card in Tarot of Vampires, and you can see that clear as day in the guidebook meaning there. So, um, studying, if you love that, this is the right, perfect, beautiful, beautiful deck for that. Um, and I'm like super excited for you because you're going to love it. Um, important to know, Ian Daniels does have reversals listed and reversal meanings, but he doesn't encourage you to mess up the cards and read some upside down what he encourages you to do is even if you draw it upside down turn it right side up and look at the actual image the way that he's created it then you can go ahead and turn it back to the upside down position if you want or not um, I don't tend to do reversals as far as like mess up my deck that way I like all my cards upright but typically intuitively I know if it's in shadow or not especially when I'm reading for other people so that's a personal thing but he does have those meanings in the guidebook and so you can choose whether you want to shuffle and you know you want upside down and upright and all those good things or not um let's see i'm like so excited to be starting this that i don't feel i'm being very helpful okay that's what i was going to talk about um don't let yourself get freaked out by certain cards um, because um, the meanings are truthful and upfront and this is not a love and light tarot deck this is a deck that embraces the shadow you are going to find in your guidebook meanings and as you pull cards that some uncomfortable things are going to come up um, I would encourage you instead of getting freaked out and walking away kind of dive in and sit with like why is that freaking me out so much um there's a lot of of um healing and empowerment and understanding to be found in that so i really really want to encourage you don't um don't give up keep going with it even if it starts to feel like oh that's a little scary like i really don't want that ta that tower card anymore like i don't want to see that i don't want it Blah. don't have you know even if you feel that like Take a breath, breathe into the little belly, and like continue on because there is it's gonna be worth pushing past that little bit of fear threshold that pops up. Like I said, if you're absolutely freaked out, don't push in a way that's gonna be negative. But if you feel like you can kind of push through, go for it, it's gonna be worth it. Hold on one sec. So the other thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is to, again, like I said, actually read the guidebook meaning for the cards that you pull because you're going to find new meanings even if, even if you're already a seasoned reader. You'll find something new in the guidebook which will allow you to open up in a new way to a card that you, know, you already have a preconceived notion about, exploring a new side, um, and really take your time with the cards. Like I was saying, don't lay out 30 cards, like lay out one, two, three, five, and then really sit with them, meditate with them, really pay attention to the feelings that come up. Now, and because we're talking about shadow, we're not just talking about knowledge here. We're also talking about, you know, feelings, emotions, fears, things that we don't want to look at, um, parts of ourselves that we're afraid of, power. 
sensuality, sexuality, passion, spirituality, how all these things marry together. And this deck really, really speaks to that. So um, when you find your buttons getting pushed in that way, or, you, or you're kind of like called to maybe look at something in a new way, uh, I think that this deck really supports that, but you have to kind of go slow enough with it to really feel it. So, okay, this has been super long little intro video. It's been like, I don't know, 20 whatever minutes long. Um, and it's just kind of setting some bas basics up for you. So if you just got the deck and you're like, I don't know what to do racing, can you help me? These are some first steps that I would love for you to take. Spend some time clearing, consecrating your deck. Spend some time shuffling your deck, holding it, connecting with it energetically. Then start with one card one card please just draw one card with me uh draw one card sit with what comes up intuitively write that down then read your guidebook meanings you know take some notes there that feel applicable and then sit with the feelings that come up and what you're experiencing um, as you're sitting with that card image and the next few videos in this series i'm going to take you through how i do a daily draw how i do a spread with the tarot of vampires and then how I do a spread with tarot of vampires and other decks so that you can see that as well. Um, like I said, I know a lot of you have asked for this and I'm like super excited to start this little mini series. So um, let me know if you want me to look at anything else with tarot of, uh, tarot of vampires. You know, if there are some other videos you'd like me to do talking about that because I'd be happy to address that. All right, guys, much love, many blessings. See you in the next video.